a place to belong and uh, find some meaning and significance. I, I can't imagine a better place. We are rocking and rolling here. The kids are thriving. Our missions are thriving. Worship is thriving. I am so grateful to be a part of this congregation. Uh, so, and today is a great day uh, to start coming to worship. For this next uh, few weeks, we're going to be starting a new series called Realizing Resurrection. Called Realizing Resurrection. Resurrection. Uh, so, uh, in an Easter sermon a couple of weeks ago, I stumbled across this uh, th this phrase. Now, sometimes I come up with clever. You may say it's not clever. I think it's clever. But it, and as I read it and internalized it, it really became really significant for me in in my life. And it, it was this. I don't know if you remember it, uh, but it, it, that resurrection. This idea of resurrection, new new birth that God has the power to raise people from the dead, out of your addictions, out of your uh, out of your bounds, out of whatever it is that keeps you. This power of resurrection, resurrection never says this is just how the world works. Resurrection never says this is just how the world works. And so, as I, I, I have this sermon series sort of planned out for after Easter, and, but after, as I've been locked into that sort of phrase, it's really been haunting me that we as people of God have this power. God gives us the power to realize places in the world that are broken, that the world says there is no fix, there, it, it is hopeless, there's no sense in spending time because of this power of resurrection. We have hope that even the hopeless can happen. And so we're going to spend some time digging in what it means to realize resurrection in our lives, in our families, in our places of work, in our community, what it means to realize resurrection. And here's why I think this is so important. This is so critical. Because if we base our worldview on watching the evening news, we would, come, uh, we would come away with something like this. The world is going to hell in a handbasket. The world is hopeless. The world is corrupt. Our politicians will never agree, and so there is no way forward. Religion is not going to fix anything. The world would say that, there, that uh, systematic oppression is just the way the world works. There's no changing that. The systems would say there's no hope for mental health, and so we do what? We just build more prisons. The world would say there is no sense of hope. The world would say that bad people are just going to be bad and there's no sense in even worrying about changing it. The world would say the world would say there is no hope. But the story that we read just a couple of weeks ago, this resurrection story, the story that the world put hope on the cross and crucified it and hope died. This story says though that hope came back through the power of resurrection, through the coming of Jesus Christ. Hope did not die, but hope lives and hope is moving in and about our lives. All we have to do is realize this resurrection potential for our lives. You all hear a story about a man who experienced realizing resurrection. Realizing resurrection, we look at the story of Saul and Paul. Now, if you've been in the church for any amount of time, you know the story of Saul. Saul was this um, was a well-respected Jewish man, uh, but he, for some reason, had taken upon himself his vision was to eradicate all of the Christians, all of the people who followed the way, the uh, people who uh, were uh, following Christ as their Savior. So he had gone to his leaders and basically uh, received. Uh, hunting license to go out and uh, get together all of these Christians to take them to jail and then the understood expectation was that they, they would be crucified as well or put to death. So Paul Saul has this dramatic conversion experience. You remember it, the, 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 road to, um, the road to Damascus, right? He's, he's going on the road uh, and Jesus, we read it this morning, Jesus came and showed up like a bright light. And this conversion moment, this conversion moment is this idea, this idea manifests, idea manifests that even bad people can receive new vision. So we talk a lot about the story of Paul, Saul to Paul, that, that Saul was uh, totally, uh, totally changed, totally changed, and he was. But I think the story that we get this morning is this idea that it, with Paul's new vision, with Paul's new vision that he received, he was able to affect and manifest the most significant change that the world has ever seen since Jesus Christ. Since Paul took this story 
of resurrection power. He realized the resurrection. He realized this new vision for his life. He went on and wrote what? He wrote most of the New Testament, didn't he? he we have this experience of this profound, profound, all realized resurrection. All realized resurrection. And so this morning, well, not this morning, but um, as I had the, the power the power of vision, the power of vision for a life is just tremendous. When we have a passion, when we have a vision, when we have an idea of where we are going as a people, as an individual, it drives us. It drives us. You want that promotion? You're going to do all you can to get that promotion. You want, what else do you want? You want, you want that, uh, that new house. You're going to save money and get that new house. You want that family. You're going to make sacrifices so your kids can go there. This vision, this vision drives who we are. When we get our vision a little bit uh, sideways, we get our vision a little bit off, we start moving in the wrong direction, God sometimes comes in and grabs a hold of us and says, we're going to go in a different direction here, different direction. And so vision, I think, is, is critical for a group of people, for a, for a church. In some respects, my, one part of my job, one part of my job, I wear many hats, but one of them is a whole little carrot out in front of all of us for us to follow, to see where it is we're going, what it is we're trying to get, so we have some sort of direction that we're going. Some people might call it vision, some people might call it purpose, some people might call it, I don't know, what, wherever it is that we're going. So, so... Even before I knew I was coming to Wendell United Methodist Church, I began praying. When I submitted my name the two years ago to be up for a move, I started praying for the church that I would go to, that God would give us a vision for moving forward, that we would affect some resurrection power in this place. And a, a year ago, last week, I found out I was coming to Wendell United Methodist Church. And so I began praying then that God would give us some sort of vision. It was soon into uh, my appointment here that I, I started doing these cottage meetings, gatherings. We, we talked with over 100 people, all listening and teasing out what God is doing in this place. I, I spent time one-on-one -on -one with leaders. We spent time at administrative council. Our administrative council took a retreat a whole day set apart to wonder what is God doing? What is our carrot out there? Where are we going? Because, right, vision, vision leads us where we are going. And last week, um, uh, last week, your administrative council uh, realized that the vision in this place, the vision in this place is to connect Christ in our community. The vision for this place is to connect Christ to this resurrection power, this idea that uh, hope is here with a community, with a world that says hope is gone. Our purpose is to connect Christ with community. This is our vision. This is a vision I am excited about. It's wide open. It can mean a lot of different things. And so we're going to spend the next few weeks teasing out what this vision, Connecting Christ and Community, can mean for we, a people in the Wendell United Methodist Church. We're people that are continuously realizing resurrection because we believe that hope still exists. We believe that, that we believe, we believe that resurrection never says this is just the way the world is. So when a man shows up to a college campus and, and it shoots it up, and people say, we don't know what to do. We don't know what to do. Is it policy? Is it, is it gun control? Is it whatever? We believe as people of Christ, no matter how complex, no matter how, how difficult that can be, we believe in the resurrecting power of Jesus Christ that even if we turn to God and God can give us the power to solve complicated issues, even as heartbreaking as this,
May we realize the resurrecting power of Christ to manifest in the cup and the blood of Christ poured out for us so that we may have life. God invites all people into this relationship. God invites all people to come to the table, to come to relationship with Him. And yet He invites us to two things. One, we confess the ways that we have let God down. And two, we make amends with one another. So as we lead into this time of Holy Communion, we acknowledge the ways that we have succumbed to the hopelessness of the world. We acknowledge the ways that we have not participated in the resurrecting power of Jesus Christ and we repent. We repent. So as the confession is thrown up on the screen, may we uh, confess together this morning leading into communion. We'll take a, a moment of quiet and silent confession and then I'll lead us.